Shalom, Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Yahweh Kakwadash, Yahweh, which is the one and true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. I would like to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole for the elect. And Shalom to you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am your brother Mashiach Irazaka from the servants of Yahweh Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And uh, pretty much this lesson is going to be uh, titled as Salvation is Only for the Israelites. All right, there's a mass conception brought up across this world that salvation is for everybody of the world. All right, it doesn't matter if you're blue, white, purple, black, orange you know teal all right that you're it's automatic guaranteed that you can receive salvation but that's not in the scriptures all right that's not proven in the scriptures so we're going to go in the scriptures and we're going to bring this out proven that salvation is for the nation of israel who are the nation of israel today the so-called negroes hispanics and native american indians scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth all right we are the true Hebrew Israelites according to the Bible. So you will want to repent and come out of the ways of society before it's too late. All right. So we're going to prove that salvation is only for the Israelites. And, um, you know, one way to prove this is because you got people that will read John 3.16. So we're going to go to John 3.16. Now, one thing you got to understand about John 3.16 is when you go to John 3.16, you really, truly have to understand, Salakia, what's being um, brought out in the scriptures and what particularly, what words mean in certain precepts, all right? Because, you know, you can't just read a scripture if you don't have a proper breakdown of a particular word that's in the scripture, all right? So you always have to do that. So when you go into the meaning of that word world there, and actually, I'll go back real quick and read it for verbatim. This is John 3.16. It says, for God so loved the world. So remember that word world there, because we're going to go into the Greek of that word, meaning of that word uh, world. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. All right. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life so you have people they'll read this scripture here and they'll say see the heavenly father sent his only begotten son to die for everyone's of the everybody sins everyone of the world he died for everyone of the entire world everybody meaning if you it don't matter if you're black white orange blue purple uh green teal you know you are automatically guaranteed salvation but that's not what this scripture is actually pertaining to. So we're going to read it again and we're going to get the Greek. So you got to go into the meaning of words. This is John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world. Remember that word world there again. It says that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we're going to go into the Greek word or the interliner of the meaning of that word um, world. All right. So when you go into the meaning of that word world there. All right. It's like it. Cosmos. Cosmos. Play it again because I have my volume low. Strong's G, 2889, Cosmos, Cosmos. So when you go into the Greek word of world, it goes into G, 2889, which is Cosmos, all right? And when you go down into the meaning, the outline of biblical usage, all right, it says an APT and hum a humanist arrangement or constitution order or government and that government is the establishment of israel that's what that government is constitution government is talking about the israelites all right and that's what that means and that's what that's referring to it's talking about the israelites 
All right. The Messiah died for the nation of Israel. He didn't die for every single person of the earth. All right. That's not in the scriptures. He died for the Israelites. Yahweh Shai was an Israelite. He was of the tribe of Judah. All right. And you can meet, we can read that in Matthew's the first chapter. All right. So, again, that word world goes into the Greek word cosmos, which goes into G2889. All right. That's a constitution or government that's pertaining to the Israelites. All right. That's pertaining to the Israelites. And we're also going to get rid of that Galatians 3 and 28 because people read that. You know, we had a bugged out individual back in the day. You know, um, he used to be a scoffer. I don't really see him as much. But he used to go around to each Hebrew Israelite group uh, justifying this scripture, saying this is how you get a Hebrew Israelite is by reading Galatians 3.28. But his ass is not knowing that Galatians 3.28 is still pertaining to the Israelites. It doesn't s switch up. It doesn't. All right. It doesn't switch up. This is Galatians 3.28. It says there neither. It says there is neither Jew nor Greek. Now, when you go into the meaning of that word Greek, it goes into the meaning of Hellenin. When you go into the etymology of the meaning of the word Hel uh, uh, Hellenis, which is a Grecian, which is Hellenis. All right. It is a Greek speaking Jew. So when you see Greek there, that's talking about foreigner Israelites. So it says there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. It says ye are all one in Christ Jesus, but his true name is Jehoshaphat. So you got people that will read this here, and they'll try to justify that as well. Oh, well, Galatians 3.28 is talking about a Jew and a Greek. No, the Greeks are actually Israelite foreigners. They were cast out as heathens. So when you see a uh, Greek there, in Galatians 3.28, that's talking about an Israelite. It's still an Israelite. It's a Hellenized Israelite because they were in the ways of the Greeks. When you go into uh, 1 Maccabees or 2 Maccabees, the 6th chapter, it goes into the Israelites that were forced to be in the ways of the Greeks. If they were, um, you know, caught keeping the laws or anything like that, they were put to death. All right? They were put to death. So when you read... First, or I think it's First Maccabees or Second Maccabees, the sixth chapter. It goes into the affliction of the of the Jews, which are the Israelites, that couldn't keep the laws. They were they were restricted from doing that. If they were caught doing that, they were put to death right then and there on the spot. All right, they were put to death. They were executed. So you had Israelites that were Hellenized. They were in the ways of the Greeks. They spoke Greek, dressed Greek. They were in the ways of the Greeks, but they were Israelites of the flesh. They just had a gent they had a Gentile state of mind. All right. So let's read this again, Galatians 3.28. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in, in Christ Jesus. But his real name is Jehovah Shai. That's the name of the Messiah. His true name is Jehovah Shai. So, you know, people will read that there and try to justify that this is talking about uh, heathens as well. So anybody can still be saved. No. All right. That Jew is talking about Israelites that's in their heritage. And that Greek is talking about foreigner Israelites, Israelites that were in the ways of the Greeks. And I'm going to prove that. Now, when you go to uh, Acts 6 and 1, and this is all you got to do. When you go to Acts 6 and 1, this is Acts 6 and 1. It says, and in those days when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of Grecians. Now, keep in mind, stay focused on that word Grecian there. All right. That Grecian is making the whole entire point of Galatians 3.28. All right. Let's read it again. In those days when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of Grecians against the Hebrews. So remember that word Grecian there. Remember that word. It says because the widows were neglected in a day of ministration. Now, when you go into the interliner of the meaning of that word uh, Grecian. All right, and we're going to get it right now. It goes into G1675. Hellenists, all right? Strong's G1675. Hellenis taste. Hellenis taste. A Hellenist, all right? One who imitates the manner 
manners and customs or the worship of the Greeks and use the Greek tongue. Who did that? The Israelite foreigners. All right. The Israelite foreigners. So that Galatians 3.28 is talking about the Israelites. All right. It's talking about the Israelites. Because you had is you had two types of Gentiles. You had Israelite foreigners, Israelites of the flesh, and then you had uh, natural heathens. That's not an Israelite. All right. But in Galatians three twenty eight, that was talking about foreigner Israelites. All right. Read the next one because the next one is going to be the main point in what I'm saying, proving that those. Uh, Greeks that you read in Galatians 3.28 is talking about those foreign Israelites. And also uh, John, John 3.16. It says, used in the New Testament of Jews, which are Israelites, born in foreign lands and speaking Greek. So that kills everything on what Galatians 3.28. All right, because Galatians 3.28 is talking about the Israelites. All right, John 3.16 is pertaining to the Israelites. All right. So now we're going to get to the main point now, and we're going to prove that salvation is only for the Israelites. See, all you got to do is read the Bible, and once you get a proper understanding through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashimashai from his prophets, who are the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, all right, you're going to get the understanding. But if you don't study, you're not going to get the understanding. You're going to be confused, and you're going to be bugged out. That's why it's good to understand the breakdowns and learn them. This is Psalms 147 and 19. It says, he show of his word unto Jacob. He show of his word unto Jacob. Who's this talking about? Israel. The nation of Israel. The 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. It says, his statutes and his judgment, judgments unto Israel. See? That's who the Lord is dealing with. Verse 20. This is blunt right here. It says he have not dealt so with any nation. So these 17 heathen nations, all right, the Lord created 18 nations, but he's only dealing with one specific nation out of the 18. And that one nation, which consists of the 12 tribes, are the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, which is the nation of Israel. That's the one nation, the only nation that the Lord is dealing with out of the rest of the 18. So you have 17 heathen nations started from Esau on down. Those are heathen nations. Y'all can't repent. Salvation isn't for you. It's only given to the Israelites. So again, the Lord created 18 nations, but he's only dealing with one specific nation out of the 18. And that's the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Verse 20, he have not dealt so with any nation. So the Lord isn't dealing with everybody. That John 3.16 is pertaining to the Israelites that, are, that were scattered abroad. Throughout the four corners of the earth going into Deuteronomy 28 and 64 because the Israelites were scattered. That's why that's why the Heavenly Father sent down his only begotten son. It was for the nation of Israel only. All right. It says, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Right. Because the Lord ain't dealing with you. 17 heathen nations. The Lord never made a covenant with you. 17 heathen nations. He only made it with the Israelites. And we can go into the scriptures and prove that. The Lord didn't make a covenant with you 17 heathen nations. All right. The Lord is only dealing with the Israelites. Got another precept. This is Amos 3 and 1. It says, hear this word that the Lord have spoken against you, O children of Israel. See, not everybody. Not everybody. It says, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. The Lord only known the Israelites. The 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. That's who the Lord is dealing with. That's who the Lord only loves and knows of. Is the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. He's not dealing with everybody. It says. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. And why we're being in this temporal punishment. Because our forefathers broke the old covenant. They didn't keep the laws and statutes and commandments. They broke the old covenant. And we can prove that when you go into 2 Kings, the 17th chapter. Also, when you go into the book of Judges, the nation of Israel, we would, we would, you know, we would be on, we would be on, uh, you know, we'll be on our shit for a minute. And then we'll start falling off. And then we'll be on point, And then we'll start falling off. 
will be on point and then we start falling off. So now, due to our forefathers breaking the old covenant, not keeping the laws and statutes and commandments, now we're suffering a temporal punishment. That's why you 17 heathen nations are ruling right now and you're controlling everything that's going on. You're in control of everything right now. These businesses, you know, your, your work positions, you know, whatever uh, uh, type of field you're in, you guys are all on the top. And notice that the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel is at the bottom. All right. And if we are at the top right now, either our people are selling out or they've worked so fucking hard. They have to work really hard to get there. They have to work really hard to fucking get there, man. People did like 20 years in one field just to get to where they get to. And by the time they get to where they got to get to, they're damn near elderly. All right. So this is letting you know, proving that we're the Israelites and that the Lord is dealing with us and that we're the only ones that's guaranteed salvation. It's not for everybody. You know, this is Isaiah 40, uh, Isaiah 47 in verse uh, 17. Isaiah 45 and 17, Salakia. Isaiah 45 and 17. Because <clears throat> this, this proves everything I'm saying. Isaiah 45, 17. And if you're a person that say, well, that's the Old Testament. You're reading from the Old Testament, then you're not a believer. You're an antichrist. All right. If you don't agree that the, the scriptures go hand in hand with the Old Testament and New Testament, you're an unbeliever and you're an antichrist and you're going to be destroyed. Because you have to believe everything in the Bible, not just one part. You have to believe both. The scriptures go hand in hand. All right. Isaiah 45, 17. It says, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord. Israel. All right. Not everybody. Israel. All right. It says with an everlasting salvation. We have an everlasting salvation. We have an everlasting covenant. Going into Genesis, the 17th chapter. We have an everlasting covenant and an everlasting salvation. All right. It says, ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Salvation is only for the Israelites. All right. It's not for everybody. It wasn't given to everybody. It was given to the Israelites. That's the promises. All right. That's why that's why the Lord, when he come back, he's going to deliver the elect of the nation of Israel, which we are hoping to be. All right. That's why we're in this spiritual battle right now. This is Jeremiah. Uh, 23 and it's Jeremiah 3 and 23. So like it. Jeremiah 3 and uh, 23. It's Jeremiah 3 and 23. Now check this out. Jeremiah 3 and 23. It says truly in vain. All right. Who is this talking about? Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the, from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Who is this talking about? You 17 heathen nations, all right? Truly in vain is your salvation hoped for. Your salvation is in vain. That you hoping for is vain, all right? It says, truly in the Lord, our power is in salvation of Israel. Salvation is only given to Israel. Your hope for salvation, you heathen nations, that's not Israelite descent of a so-called Negro Hispanic Native American Indian, all right, which consists of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, your hope for salvation is vain. Now, we got speckled birds out there. So we're not talking about you speckled birds. All right. You got Israelites out there that look like heathens, but they Israelites due to the bloodline, the sea line of their father, which is of a so-called Negro Hispanic name. American. We're not talking about you, you foreigner Israelites, you speckled birds. We're talking about you heathen nations. All right. That doesn't descend from a so-called Negro Hispanic or Native American Indian. Salvation it's not given to you. You don't have salvation. Salvation is only given to the Israelites. So your hope for salvation is vain, you 17 heathen nations. Salvation is only given to Israel. All right? So it's all through the scriptures. It's all through the scriptures. All right? Let's go to uh, John. We're going to get John now. This is uh, St. John, actually. 4 and 22. And let's see where Yahushai said this is what Yahweh said who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ this is John 4 and 22 it says ye worship ye know not what we know what we worship 
For salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is only given to the Israelites. Salvation is only for the Israelites. It's not for everybody. Salvation is only for the nation of Israel. All right. It's set right there. All right. Salvation is only given to the Israelites. We got another precept. And um, this is uh, so like yeah, Romans 9. I was thinking off the top of my head. Actually, I go to Romans 11. Because before I read Romans 9, it's always good to read Romans 11. Who was Apostle Paul? Apostle Paul was an Israelite, all right? And he was taught under the Pharisees. Apostle Paul was a Pharisee, all right? But he went away from that and learned under the apostles and became an apostle himself. But Apostle Paul, he was a Pharisee. He was an Israelite. He was raised under the house of the Pharisees. And one of his mentors was who? Gamaliel, a high-ranking elder in the Pharisees, which was an Israelite. The Pharisees were Israelites. All right. So Apostle Paul was an Israelite. He was a Pharisee. All right. But he went away from that and learned under the apostles and became an apostle himself. But he was an Israelite, too. All right. This is Romans 11 and 1 to, to sustain that, you know, so we won't have confusion. Yes, yeah, said he was a Roman, but he was a Roman citizen. He wasn't an actual Roman. He was a Roman citizen, just like how we're Israelites in America and we're called what? American citizens. But we're really what? Israelites. So you got to understand what's being said in the scriptures. Romans 11 and 1. I say, and this is what Apostle Paul said. I say then, have, have the Most High cast away his people, meaning that the Lord ain't dealing with his people no more. He's not dealing with Israelites, just only Israel no more. He's dealing with everybody. All right. God forbid. God forbid means no. All right. So no, the Lord didn't cast away his people. He's still dealing with them. He's still only dealing with Israelites. It says, for I also am an Israelite. Apostle Paul, he was an Israelite. It says, of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. He was a Benjamite. He was of the tribe of Benjamin. Who are the Benjamites? Do who are the Benjamites today? The so-called Jamaicans. Those are the biblical um, Benjamites according to the Bible. All right. Those are the Benjamites, according to the Bible. The Jamaicans are of the tribe of Benjamin. All right. So Apostle Paul, if he's the one on monster earth today, he'll be titled as a so-called Jamaican. All right. This is Romans 9 and 1. It says, I say, and this is what Apostle Paul said. So he proved to you in Romans 11 and 1 that he was an Israelite. All right. This is Romans 9 and 1. I say the truth in Yahweh Shai, I lie not. My conscience also bear me, bear me witness in the Holy Spirit. Verse 2, that I have great heaviness and continued sorrow in my heart. Why did Apostle Paul have continued sorrow in his heart? Because he felt bad for his people. He felt bad for his people who were what? Israelites. Because he said he was an Israelite. So he felt bad for who? His people, the Israelites. All right. It says, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Shai, for my brethren, my kinsmen. His kinsmen, according to the flesh. So we know who he's talking about. He's talking about Israelites. It says, who are Israelites? See, who are Israelites? To pertain to the adoption, we had to get grafted back to the Father. Yahweh Shai was that sacrificial lamb for us to be able to get grafted back to the Father. Because we broke the old covenant. We didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. We broke the old covenant. So Yahweh Shai, he was that sacrificial lamb for us to get grafted back to the Father, to get adopted back to the Father. Because we, we didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. We broke the old covenant. It says, to, it says, to whom pertain the adoption and the glory and the, and the covenants and the giving of the law. That was all given to the Israelites. It says, and the service and the promises. This is all given to the Israelites. All, everything that you just read right here is given to the Israelites. So salvation is only for the Israelites. All right. It's not for everybody. So hey, Lord one is less edifying. I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim Yahweh Kakodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. I would like to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole full elect. And shalom to you, sincere brother, scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. 
I am the brother Mashiach Arazakai from the Servants of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And Lord willingness, this lesson was edifying to the next time I say, Shalom.